Cross Beats Production What's going on guys, you with Nate to wait, this is Cross Beats Production, let's go. So I want to show you guys the continuation part 2 of this mixing series that I want to continue for you guys. I really apologize that I haven't done too many videos, but I really try to get one out at least once a week if I can, if not more. Um, but yeah, thank, thank you again for everything you do, thanks for your subscriptions. Uh, if you're a new viewer or a new subscriber, thank you for that. And uh, let's get straight into this mixing of this track. So I'll play the track to you once again to remind you of what it sounds like. Let's go from halfway, uh, roughly halfway through. All right, so that's kind of the, the mid, I guess, bridge chorus type thing going on there. Um, I showed you in the last video with this on the the kick and the bass, and I kind of showed you through some of the plugins I use. I don't know if I explained it exactly how some people may have perceived it, so I just really want to phase over this really quickly and just recover that. Um, so what I was talking about with the gate, uh, just to recap on that, the gate is actually using a low cut, which is not cutting out the low end frequencies. What it's doing is it's cutting, it's allowing the gate to bypass it basically. Um, so it's pretty much allowing anything from below 300 hertz downwards to be bypassed by the gate. So everything above it, it's using the gate to create that rhythm. So just to uh, get straight into this, the low end on the track is probably, like I said in the last video, one of the most crucial things you can get started on a mix, uh, specifically when you're looking at the entire track as a, as a whole track. Um, with the kick and the bass, what I want to also bring to your attention is if you're using any kind of music as a reference, I would recommend using something that's similar to the track that you've got. It's obvious to say that, but some people don't know that using a reference track is really key and crucial to getting a good solid mix with your own actual track. Now, when I listen to my tracks, I don't necessarily use a reference track at the start. I might use it right at the end or somewhere midway through just to kind of gauge where I'm at. So if I'm listening to a reference track, it would be something similar like a hip-hop track, if I'm mixing hip-hop or if it's a dance, whatever, dance track, whatever it is, it's um, something similar to the actual mix I'm working on. So I can kind of gauge where I'm at. Now, on this track, when I was listening to the kick and the bass um, in the actual track as a whole, I went back to my reference track and I listened to their, their bass and the way that they had cut off a lot of the low end. Now, what I want to try and do is emulate that so what I want to show you again on the bass just briefly is something that I probably didn't get too much into and if I did I skipped past it and this is something I've revised since the last video as well. So what I've done here is I've cut off the frequencies anything below 74 hertz. Um, that's the low end frequency that I don't really need in that bass, um, specifically in this bass instrument. And the reason is because also as well I've used a bell to cut off uh, 0.4 dB at 153. Um, the reason I don't need that is because the kick that I've got going on this track is kind of taking that space. So let me just quickly show you again in the Isotope Insight and show you what I'm talking about. So let's play the kick really quickly. And then what I'll do is play the bass separately as well. All right, sounds cool. Let's play them together and see what they're doing together. All right, so say I'm going to take off the low end that I've got. Whoa, hang on, just undo that. So I was going to take off the low end on this track, or take off the filter that I've got to show you the difference. Let me just play it without and then with. All right, awesome. So I don't know if you guys can hear that. If you can't, go back and get some headphones or listen to it in your studio with some studio or good, well, good studio monitors or good uh, headphones on. Something that can relay the bass that I've got going on here. 
So if you can hear what happened there, pretty much the low end bass that was being played on that, that Serum instrument that I've got going on, which I shared this with you in the last video. So if you want to actually download this preset for Serum, um, it's on my other video. Go back and look at that. So it's, um, it's available there for free. Um, the, the low end that I've got cut off here, it actually takes up a lot of the space in the low end spectrum of this specific mix. And when you take it away, it doesn't get rid of all of the, the niceness of the bass, like that, that rhythm that you have. It just gets rid of the, the, really stuff, the stuff that's really taking up all of the frequencies that I don't really need. So what, what I do in listening to, to this and gauging where I should cut off and what I shouldn't and all that sort of stuff is basically just do it by ear. I mean... You may not have subwoofer, a subwoofer like I have in my studio. Um, if you have headphones, you could probably hear it though. Even if you don't, I have like an Oratone or Aventone speaker in my studio and I can even hear, not that I could hear the bass down there on the, you know, the reproduction of the speaker, but I can hear it when it's hogging the rest of the spectrum. And that's a trick that I kind of, I've used for a while in, in you know, gauging how much low end I actually need. Now, Low end is an interest, interesting thing because what happens with low end is if you have too much, you can notice it starts to overcome the rest of the mix because it's using so much energy inside of the mix to recreate. Um, and what happens is it sort of starts to mask other things in the mix. So believe it or not, if you have a lot of low end in your track, it might actually make some of the top end that you had um, sort of come down in volume because it's pushing that out of the way and it's creating a masking effect. So that's just a little tip I want to share there. Um, the next thing I'll share with you guys is the actual uh, piano that I've got in this track because it does create a feature in the track that I quite like and it does have two parts to it as well. So let's play the piano and isolate that on its own and see what we've got. Okay, so as you can see on the meters here, a lot of width in the actual piano track. Sometimes you do that, sometimes you don't. It really depends on the track that you're working on. Some people have their pianos all in mono. Um, some like to spread them wide. Like I said, it really depends on the track and what you're trying to do and what you're trying to achieve with the stereo spectrum. Um, so with that, basically what I've done is I've set up M Rhythmizer and uh, this is more of a, a mixing, I guess, giveaway cheat thing, but I've set up M Rhythmizer and I've turned the piano down to 50% speed, so it slows it down. Without it, I'll play that to you. Play it with it on. This creates a different tone in the track. Little simple things like that um, can really give you some different comparative things going on. So it just teases the ear a little bit. You know, it allows you the listener not to be bored by just two two pianos doing the same thing. Um, so the next thing I've got is the gate, which I showed you again. The gate's something that just creates rhythm in the track, and I've used the gate on the other piano as well. None of the actual spectrum on these pianos has has been taken out. Now this isn't a final mix that I've got that I'm going to send out yet, but what I might do in this specific mix is I would put it into mono so I'd listen straight in mono. So you've got a little button here that you can press that's in red. Um, now that's in mono so it tells you mono or in stereo. So if you leave the thing on there it'll tell you mono or stereo. So you click that um, and you can send your track straight into mono. So this is a little trick that I kind of use. I actually have a button on my, my audio interface that I press rather than doing this. but. If you don't have that on your audio interface, this is the trick. Um, so mono is a fantastic thing to then gauge where the rest of the things should sit inside of your mix. You can even use this with your kick and your bass as well, but I use it for everything generally on a mix just to hear if things are right. So if you switch in between mono and stereo, it's just a click of a button. It's really quick to do. Uh, you don't even have to think about it. Just click in and out and you can listen to it. The reason why you do this though is because when you're listening in stereo, things on the left and things on the right may trick your ears to think they're either quieter or louder than they actually are. Now, if you have it just in the center channel and you're listening directly in mono, 
you're only going to hear one source of audio and that one source of audio even on some certain systems like iPhones um, even in the stores or your wherever you are um, sometimes even just in the you know the local area you might have a radio playing and you're not going to be hearing that in stereo so most of the time you want to have your mono compatibility set up a hundred percent so that you know when it's played back in other scenarios other than just in your studio it's going to actually replay how you want it to sound so this is a handy trick to get the rest of your instruments in place and work them together um, with your bass and the rest of everything else so let's play the piano and the kick in the bass and see what they sound like Cool. Now, what I'm hearing in my specific um, studio right here is I can hear some of the piano low end that probably doesn't need to be there. Now, I intentionally left that there so I could show you guys this little thing that I would normally do and go through it. Actually, what I'll do is just go for a pre-sonus plug-in so that everybody that's following this video can actually watch and, you know, sort of learn from what I'm doing. So let's just put the um, pre-sonus, I shall put on after the gate. So I've got it there. So we've got the PreSonus EQ, and what we're gonna do is listen to that piano and try and gauge where some of that low end is, is needed and where it's not. Now, the trick that I use, and it's not really a trick, but it's probably common knowledge, but the thing that I do is I listen to the piano. When the sound starts to change, then I, don't know, I know that I've gone too far. Now, this isn't the case if you're mixing and you're trying to change the sound of an instrument by cutting off top end frequencies or low end frequencies or, you know, creating comb filters and things like that. It doesn't apply in this situation, but in a mixing scenario, what you're trying to achieve is something that pushes certain frequencies out of the way so others can fill that space. Now, in this track, like I said, there's not too much going on. There's a lot of, you know, just air for the, the drum kit that's at the top. So I'll just play most of that so you can hear it. And let's get rid of some of this piano that we don't need. So to my ear, that sounds pretty good. Um, we can go in and out, listen to what it sounds like with and without it. So let's take out the actual hut, the top part of the drums and just listen to the piano and the, the kick and the bass. That sounds pretty good. So let's take it back out of um, stereo, sorry, back out of mono when we're listening to it and see what that changes. Sounds pretty good to me, so let's go without and then with in mono and then stereo. Awesome. So I think in my, uh, my opinion, that sounds pretty cohesive. It doesn't sound like I've lost too much of the piano either. 
It just cleans up some of the low end. Now, you don't have to put a low end or a high cut on every single thing um, that, you're, that you're mixing to get rid of the low end. Some things might need the low end and some things may not even be interfering with each other in the mix. So you really got to pick your battles when you're listening to your instruments and figure out whether or not, you know, for example, in this section of the track where there's only one thing or two things going on. So this one section, let me play that to you. I should just unsolo this. So you can hear there's only one real element of the track and it's not going to matter if I take out the, the low end um, because it doesn't really affect anything else in that regard. So I could leave a lot of the low end on that specific instrument. The only time where it might affect it is when it gets to this part where there's other instruments being played and that low end then either disappears completely making the instrument sound weak um, or it affects the, the, the rest of the low end like the kick and the bass and stuff like that. So like I said, you've got to really pick your battles when you're mixing your track. Think about what you want as the top elements on your track and think about how they should be sitting in the mono spectrum first before you ever think about the stereo spectrum with panning and things like that. It's really kind of key to think about the mono first because like I said, when you're coming up to other platforms, you know, like people listening on their iPhone in, in the platform or the, the, tra the train and stuff like that, they're not going to have the headphones in each ear, or some of them do, but not everybody has, I don't know why, but not everyone does that. And if you're, for example, walking through the mall, you're not going to have um, the stereo speakers either side of you, unless you're in some kind of crazy theater or something. Um, but, you know, it's just key to be able to, to listen to your music in mono and understand how it's sounding in mono before you do anything in stereo. So I want to share that next tip with this specific video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, hit that like button. Also subscribe to this channel and uh, make any comments below as to what you'd like to see further. Otherwise, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.